everybody. Today I'm going to be showing you my entire year long empties for 2019. This section is just going to be the makeup. I am also going to be filming a skincare version and a hair care, body care, and a home fragrance version. But those, it would be a super long video if I don't break them up. I am going to let you know in this video, which this is the first of the three parts, that in 2019, I'm looking at my spreadsheet below on my computer, I used up 638 items and then I decluttered another 77. That is huge. Now, unfortunately, the things that I brought in, my collection still grew by 36 items, but in very different aspects of my collection, which I'm really happy about. I was able to use up a very significant amount of items and I'm super proud of it. I ended up using up $4,225.20 worth of retail value make full items. For, so that's every category. That's huge. That's amazing. So let's cut to it. Okay, so here are all the primers I used up. These, there's 12 of them here. They're all minis. Starting with, I used up the MAC Prep and Prime. This is okay, but not something that I would seek out. I used up the Giorgio Armani Fluid Sheer. This is probably not technically a primer. It's probably more like a foundation or a you know, BB, CC, whatever it is. But I used it as a primer. I wouldn't seek that out. This is the Hard Candy Sheer Envy. I really liked this and I've got another one of this size, but I don't think it's available anymore. Then I have the Mirad Invisibler. I actually really liked this, but it's pretty expensive, so I don't think that I would seek it out and buy it for myself. I also used up this uh, YSL uh, Blur Primer. I did not like this. I actually, I really didn't like it in the beginning, and then by the end of it, it was just kind of okay, but it's also really expensive and not something that I would seek out. Now... I did really like this. This is the Elizabeth Mott Thank Me Later Mattifying Primer. I really enjoyed that. And it's definitely something that I would potentially look at picking up. I used up the Professional License to Blot. Didn't like that. That was kind of weird. I used, let me hold on. I used up the Urban Decay Optical Illusion Primer. This was really good. Like I, like, this was really good. I saw a major difference in my foundation when I used this and this is something that I would probably buy, especially if I saw it on a 21 Days of Beauty sale. Then I used up two of these Hangover Primers. I did not like this. I think it smells weird. I'm going through a travel size right now, and I think that one smells weird too, so I know it's not just not these, and this is not something that I would purchase once I have the other one used up. This, however, this was amazing. I've got multiple of this size still, and I probably would purchase it again. It's the Too Faced Primed and Peachy. I loved this. I really enjoyed what it did for my skin. And then the last one that I used up was the Makeup Forever... This is the smoothing, and I really, really enjoyed this. I thought this was really good. Um, not sure if it's something that I would go out and purchase because Makeup Forever is pretty expensive, but I really did enjoy that. So these are all of the primers that I used up in 2019. Here are all of the foundation empties that I had for 2019. Let's start with these. I had five full size, I had six deluxe size, and then I had seven sample sizes. So the first one I have is the Lancome uh, Tent Idol 24 Hour. This was pretty old in my collection. I didn't love it, but I think that a piece of me, a piece of me wants to think that it's because it had gotten older. So I might be interested in trying a sample of this out again to see if it had just gotten old on me. I did use up a Wet n Wild Photo Focus. I did not like this. I know lots of people like it. I couldn't handle the smell. I couldn't handle the applicator. There was just a lot about this that I did not like. I also used up the Estee Lauder Double Wear. Again, this one, along with the Lawn Comb, these were quite a few years old in my collection. And I just, I don't think that it did the same things 
for me when I was using it up as it did while I was using it in the beginning. So I would be interested in trying that one again. This one is my number one. This is the It Cosmetics CC Plus, just the regular one. I took the pump off to use it on another one. This is in medium. I'm actually light medium in this shade, but this was back when um, there was no light medium. I love that. See, I have another one here. And anytime that I can get my hands on them as like an add-on or they're on sale, I pick one up. I also finished off the NYX Total Control Drops. These are kind of similar to um, the Cover FX Drops. I liked these, but this is like $14 for half an ounce, so they went, or for 0.43 ounces, so they went really fast. And I wouldn't pick up these ones, but I would try something similar. Then I used up a little a deluxe size of the Tarte Amazonian Clay. I loved this, and I will definitely be picking up the full size. I love how this looked on my skin. I also used up the Physician's Formula Super BB. I did not love this, and it started to separate on me at the end, and I just, it broke down really fast on my face and wasn't something I enjoyed. Like I said, this is my favorite. I love it, and I'm going to continue to purchase the Cosmetic CC Cream. This is the Tarte Found Sealer. I actually really, really enjoyed this. I was surprised that I enjoyed it as much as I did, and it's going to be something that I look at at a later date to possibly purchase. I also used up the Makeup Forever Ultra HD Perfector Skin Blurring Tint. Did not like this. Didn't really do anything special for me. And it's not something that I would seek out. This, however, pleasantly surprised me. This is the Beauty Blender Bounce Foundation in... Doesn't say on here what color it was. This was in a foil packet, but it was almost point... It was like 0.18. So I got like... 15 uses out of this. I really, really, really enjoyed this. I didn't love it the first time I wore it, but of course I tried to apply it with a brush because that's my preferred way of applying it. And then I used a sponge after that and loved it every time I wore it. This is, despite the fact of the packaging, I think is just gimmicky and it makes it so that you can't get every last bit out of the package. It's definitely something that I would look into. And then I used up a like blister packet of the all nighter foundation didn't love that on my skin I used up a sample of the laundry uh the girl on laundry de Poe foundation didn't love that I used up a sample of the Chanel Vita Lumiere aqua didn't love that the Dr. Jart BB Disappore I actually really liked this but I'm not sure if it's available anymore the YSL forever CC primer this one was, it's in between. It was apricot, so I definitely didn't consider it a primer because it had so much coverage, like so much color, but that's not something that I would be interested in. This is the Maybelline Fit Me Matte and Poreless. This made me remember how much I really enjoyed the Fit Me, and I probably would be interested in repurchasing this at some point and giving it another go because I have used up a fit me before in the past and then this one was the Too Faced Primed and Peachy in Warm Nude definitely my wrong shade but I loved this so much that when the new year happened I bought it while it was on the like 20% off with another 20% off or whatever it was so I ended up getting it for like $25 or something which was awesome but I got it in vanilla warm nude was what they shade matched me to and it was not a good match so these are all the foundations that I used up and let's go on to concealers here are all the concealers that I used up in 2019 I have four full size two deluxe sizes and then four little blister packs I used up the Maybelline instant age rewind love this absolutely would recommend it and I have repurchased it I also used up the Revlon Age Defy DNA Concealer. This was not anything special. It's definitely not something that I would recommend, but I'm pretty sure you can't buy it anymore. I also used up a ColourPop No Filter Concealer. I liked this, but I used it up in a roulette pan collab, so I tracked the usage, and it 
went really fast. So I probably, it, I don't know what it was about this concealer, but even, it was just, it, I used it up in like a month and a half and that seemed like really fast. I also used up the Kat Von D Lock It Tattoo Concealer. I have a couple of products of hers in my collection left. And I'm trying to get them used up. This was the old packaging, the old formula, and I'm glad to have it out. I also used up this little mini of the It Cosmetics Bye Bye Under Eye Illumination in light. I don't like these like super emollient sticky concealers, so it's not something that I would look into replacing. I also used up the Benefit Fake Up Concealer. I actually really like this concealer. A couple of years ago, I used up a sample of this and didn't like it, but this time I actually really enjoyed it, which kind of surprised me. I think it's just my concealer preferences have changed over time. These three little blister packs are all shades of the Too Faced um, Born This Way Concealer. I loved all of these. I was having a hard time figuring out what my right shade was. I ended up picking this up at the same time as the foundation, the Too Faced foundation. I got it for like $18, which I thought was a great price for a half ounce concealer. And I ended up getting it in Shortbread, which is a perfect yellow toned under eye concealer for me. This also was a sample of the Pretty Vulgar Undercover Concealer in Little White Lies. And it's a great concealer match for me. And then I ended up this last month in January receiving the right shade, this shade, in my BoxyCharm box. So I do have this in my collection now and I'm excited to get use out of it. These are all the concealers I used up in 2019. These are all the eye primers I used up in 2019. I have four deluxe sizes and a sample. So I'll start with this one because this one's what's weird. This one was in like a foil packet, but it had 0.05 ounces of product in it. And this one, I believe, had 0.06, I think. Yeah, this one had 0.06. So that kind of made me laugh because there was only a tiny bit less in this foil packet than in this size. So that's why I'm considering this one a deluxe. But first I used up the Smashbox Photo Finish Lid Primer in Light. I love this and this is going to be the one that I repurchase once I've gone through some of the ones I have. I also used up the Laura Mercier. This was the Eye Basics in Wheat. I liked it, but I'd had it in my collection for quite a while, so it kind of got old on me. I also used up the Urban Decay eyeshadow primer potion in original. It had been a long time since I had used this and I'm using another one of these now. I forgot how much I really enjoyed it and so I am enjoying using that. I used the Pure Get a Grip eyeshadow primer. I didn't really like this. I honestly have yet to find a pure product that I actually really enjoy but this came with a palette we got in BoxyCharm. I decluttered the palette, but I figured I'd use up the eye primer and give it a try. It wasn't something I enjoyed. This is the Too Faced Shadow Insurance. I hate the smell of this. I cannot be the only one out here that doesn't like the smell of this. And um, for that reason, it's not something that I would seek out. This is all the powders I used up in 2019. I've got one, two, three, four five full size and one, two, three, four, five, six sample size and then, or like deluxe size. And then I had a just like sample cardboard, whatever. So I used up the NYX blotting powder. I used this up in light. I actually really enjoyed this and it might be something that I'd look into, but it did break on me multiple times and I had to repress it. So Maybe. I'm not sure. This one is like my go-to. This is the Rimmel Stay Matte Press Powder. The funny thing is, is everybody talks about their lids breaking. I've never had a lid break on me before. So they're like $4 and I would absolutely keep repurchasing them. This is the NYX Color Correcting in Banana. I'm actually repurposing this right now to put a different powder in. But I did finish that off. I liked it, but it's not something that I would... It's not something that I would seek out. I used the Becca Hydro Mist. I hated this. I did not like it. I was super excited to get it in a BoxyCharm. And then once I had it, didn't like it. 
This is the other full size. This is the e.l.f. under eye setting powder, whatever it's called. I really enjoyed this, but it's so small for $4 that it ends up being really expensive if you were to get the same amount as another like bigger loose powder. So I don't know if I would repurchase it unless I was specifically in Walmart needing an under eye powder and I didn't want to spend a bunch of money because I still have so many left over. I also used up the It Cosmetics Bye Bye Pores Press Powder. I actually took the pan out of this and I'm using it for something else right now. So this is just an empty, an empty package like that. But um, I loved this. I've got another one of these to use up. And then I would probably buy this if it was on an Ulta 21 Days of Beauty. I really enjoyed this. I also used up a Tarte Smooth Operator. I like this powder, but I have a hard time with it because it's one of those super, super, like it's like an HD powder where it's super, super finely milled. And my loose powders I use for baking. I have a hard time using this one for baking. So it's not something that I would repurchase, but I do have a full size that I'm working on. That's actually what's inside here right now because I hate the packaging of the full size of this. So I'm going to use that one up and then it's not something that I will seek out again. I also used up this little mini of the Bare Minerals Mineral Veil. I really like this. Again, I have others that I like more, but I've got a couple more of these in my collection that I do plan on using up. Then I have the Ciate, um, I think this is called the like Extraordinary, yeah, the Extraordinary Loose Powder. I actually have two of these full size in my collection because I got one through Ipsy and then a friend of mine gave me hers because she doesn't use loose powder. I liked that and I have two more to use. I also have this little, like a mini mini of the Laura Mercier translucent. I loved this. I've actually also got the like travel size that they sell on Sephora for like $23 or whatever it is. I really like this. But with that being said, once I finish these up, I wouldn't repurchase this one. I would actually just use up my Fenty loose powder and then repurchase my Fenty loose powder because I do like it better than the Laura Mercier. I also used up this little size of the Kat Von D Locket loose powder. I really enjoy this powder. I've got a full size. Once that's done, I won't be repurchasing it, but I did really enjoy that powder. I also used I up this just little sample card of um, the powder. Unfortunately, it didn't even give me one application to be able to figure out if I liked it. But the last thing I need is some more pressed powder, so I probably will just call that a loss and not seek it out at any point. I used up four bronzers in 2019, one full size and then three deluxe sizes. I used up a full size Physicians Formula Butter Bronzer. I love this bronzer. I have repurchased it and I buy it on Amazon now because that is the way cheaper place to buy it from. I also used up a deluxe size of the Amazonian Clay. Oh, what is this? The Park Avenue Princess. I hated this in the beginning and then I rolled it into a project pan and I really enjoyed it by the end of it and it is something that I would potentially seek out. I used up this little baby size from the Balm. It's the Balm Desert. I, there's a magnet so it makes it harder to open. It was this little tiny baby size but I did repress it into that the pan for the powder that I showed you and it took it gave me like a month's worth of product and I really really enjoyed this so it is something I'd be interested in seeking out. I also used up the Lorac tantalizer so this is I believe like a baked it's like a baked formula I did not like that about it I actually scraped it all off of the um like ceramic pan and repressed it when I finished that one. I repressed it into that powder pan and used it that way. I liked it, but I know the full size is baked and I don't like baked bronzers, so I wouldn't seek this one out. So I have purchased this one. I would purchase these two and I wouldn't purchase that one. Here are my two little bitty highlighting products for 2019. I finished off a mini of the Balm Snee Luminizer. 
I liked this, but it's not something that I would pick out or like repurchase because I prefer Mary Lou. And I have multiple of her. And then I finished up a Benefit High Beam. This looks so gross inside. It was okay. I've had it in my collection for a long time, so I pulled it into a, some sort of a project pan, used it up that way. Um, I would not repurchase either of these. For brow pencils, I used up four this year. I used up an Anastasia Brow Wiz in light brown. I really enjoy this, and I would probably pick up another two if they are on 21 Days of Beauty again for Ulta. That's how I got this one and another one that I have in my collection. I also used up a Sephora waterproof retractable brow pencil. This wasn't anything special, but it was a terrible color match for me. So I'd maybe try it again, but at $12, I would rather pick up one of these while it's on sale. I also used up a Maybelline brow definer or define a brow. I this used to be my go-to brow pencil back before I found high end and I found a couple of these at one of my like discount grocery store type things so I picked them up I'm working through them I still like it but it's definitely not a favorite anymore this however was a favorite this was it's like a little tiny nub now the Ofra you know the Ofra something the Ofra it was like more of like a creamy brow pencil you sharpened it I loved this thing and I think they're only like $13 but I think you can only buy them on the Ofra website I totally would repurchase this one if I ever felt the need to place a Ofra order for more than just a brow pencil or if they started carrying this brow pencil in Ulta with the rest or even on Ulta's website with the rest of Ofra's products so have I have another one in my collection, but I would repurchase it. Wouldn't, probably wouldn't, but I would repurchase the Ofra. I finished up six brow gels this year. These two are full size and then these four are considered minis. But I did end up using up a full size of the Benefit Gimme Brow and then also a deluxe size that's like a third of the product. I love Gimme Brow. I absolutely love it. It is my favorite. It's my go-to and I would repurchase this. I did try the Essence Make Me Brow and I just didn't like the color match. Um, I would probably try it again. I mean, it was only $3, but I'm pretty sure this is the only brown shade they carry. So I'm not interested if that's all they've got. I also used up a travel size of the Anastasia Clear Brow Gel. I absolutely love this. I have a full size in my collection and this is probably my favorite clear brow gel. And then this is my favorite tinted. I also used up two minis of the Cella clear brow gel. I really, really, really like this stuff. But I don't know of anywhere that sells Cella other than their own website. Maybe Ulta. But if I'm going to spend, I know that these were like valued at like $16. And they were like a two-third size. So if I'm going to spend 20 something dollars on a clear brow gel, I'm just going to buy the Anastasia. So, and I've got, I just actually finished up another one of these little minis. And then I have one more of these minis in my collection. So I have another benefit. I pro I would look at the shade selection again for this one and maybe pick it out. I already have another one of these and I wouldn't seek this one out again, but I would totally use it if I got one. I actually love the br their brow pencil, but it's $20. So if I'm going to spend $20 on a brow pencil, I've got others I like as well. But if I somehow found these coming back into my life, I would absolutely use them More again. liquid liners, I used up five. I've got three full size, two minis. I've got the Essence Waterproof Liner Pencil. This was pretty cheap. I want to say it was like 2 or $3. I really liked this, and I would probably try it again. I don't feel like it lasts. I feel like this actually lasted less time than either of these minis that were more expensive. So I don't know. It's cheaper, but at the same time, if I go through four of them in the same time as one that I know I love, it's probably not a very good deal. I also used up one of the e.l.f. waterproof eyeliner pens. These dry out really fast. I would not, I wouldn't repurchase those. I did use up a Jordana Fabuliner. This used to be my ultimate go-to, 
but I find the tip of it is too big now for my preferences for winged liner. So it's probably not something I would pick up. I also used up a deluxe size of the Stila waterproof liquid eyeliner. This is my favorite. This is my go-to. I have a few more of these in my collection and then this is definitely what I will continue to pick up. And then I have a trooper liner. I love this. I think it's great, but I'm not going to buy it anymore. So it's just a fond memory in my past from now on. So here are all the mascaras I used up in 2019. I used up eight full sizes and used up 12 deluxe sizes. Honestly, life's too short for a bad mascara. So there was a couple of these that I opened, I tried, I didn't like, so I just binned them. Let's see. I, I completely used up, I used for a full three months the Tarte Tartist mascara. I really enjoyed this and something I'd be interested in trying again. I used up the Trustique Good Vibes Mascara. This actually wasn't that bad, and I have another full size in my collection, but it's not something I'd go out and purchase. I hated this. This was the Wander Beauty Unleashed Mascara. I didn't think it did anything for me. I really didn't like it. I also used up a Bare, Minimal a Bare Minerals Lash Domination full size. This one... This used to be a good mascara in my eyes like five years ago. I've used up like five or six of these probably in my Instagram life, my makeup using lifetime. But now compared to a lot of the others, it's not, I, I don't like it anymore. I also used up a full size of the Too Faced Better Than Sex. I love this mascara. I will continue to purchase this mascara. I really enjoyed it. This one was a surprise for me. This was the Tarte Big Ego. I wasn't expecting to like it. I got it in a BoxyCharm, was super irritated I was getting another mascara because at one point they sent like five months in a row mascara. I loved this. I used, I actually think I used this for more than the three months. I think I used it for like almost four months. I loved it and I would totally buy it if it was on sale. But the problem is, is I have enough mascaras in my life to not need to buy them for another at least a couple of years, even using them up at this rate. So that one's going to just have to be uh, something I think about until a later date. I also used up, this one was one I didn't use up. I have this one and then I also have this one. I kind of liked the mini. The mini was okay. But I hated the full size of the It Cosmetics Superhero Mascara. I don't know what everybody's raving about, but it flaked on me and it transferred on me and I did not enjoy it at all. I would not repurchase that. And I actually had another one of these little ones that I used up or that I got and I gave it away because I couldn't be bothered to even use a bad mascara for a month. Then I have the L'Oreal Voluminous Original. I really liked this. This is kind of an old, like an OG mascara. And I think I have another one in my collection that I'll use up, but I don't think if I'm going to buy a, a mascara from L'Oreal, it's definitely going to be Lash Paradise. I used up the Marc Jacobs Velvet Noir. I think I probably used this for a month. It wasn't anything great. It's not something that I, would I also used up a deluxe size of the Urban Decay Perversion. I like the wand of this one, and I think that it was a good layering mascara but I don't think that it was anything like super special. I also used up the Cargo Boundless Lashes. I think I used this for like a month. It wasn't anything super awesome. And I used that at the same time as the Neutrogena Healthy Volume. I didn't like this one either. Those were both kind of ass. Let's actually, let's get the rest of the ass out of the way. So I had a Lancome Hypnose Drama. This was pretty dried out. I was able to fully use it up in a month. Don't think it's anything special. Same with the Lancome Monsieur Big. A lot of people really like this. I think I had this for too long because I only got like three weeks of use out of it. It's okay, but it wasn't anything amazing. I already talked about the cosmetics little one. And then I also had this. This was the Milk Makeup, however you pronounce that. 
I have no idea where I got this or how I got this, but I was not a fan of this. I like a lot of milk makeup items, but I did not enjoy the mascara. These four mascaras here are my top four. These are the four that I like the most, except for the Big Ego. I really, really liked that one as well. But I've got another Too Faced Better Than Sex. Love that one. I have a Benefit Roller Lash. I loved this one for years. Would totally recommend that. I've really been enjoying the uh, Benefit Bad Gal Bang. I have not been a fan of Benefit mascaras it, if I, other than the Roller Lash. Like I hated whatever the other one was, the waterproof one. Hated that one, but I love this. And then this was the surprising one for me. This was the Too Faced Damn Girl. I didn't think that Too Faced was going to come out with a mascara that I liked more than the Better Than Sex. I love this one. I think it's great. There's a lot of people that don't like it. I love the wet formula. I love the brush. I just, I really, really, really enjoyed this mascara. And I would, I would buy a full size of this. Even, so if this was on sale, I would buy it even knowing that I have way too many other mascaras in my collection. So these are all the mascaras I used these are up. all the lip products I used up in 2019. I used up one lip gloss. This was the Urban Decay Hi-Fi Shine in SPL. I, I was okay with this gloss, and I mean I used it up completely. My issue with this is it had so much glitter in it that I could feel the glitter and that's a big no for me. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't repurchase. And I'm, I, I know that Kelly Gooch loves some of the shades in this line, but I, I don't think that I'd even give another one of the, this brand a try because I'm not a f real big fan of lip glosses. I used up three lip balms. This one's from Perfectly Posh. It's the Life is a Comfort Heal It In Skin Stick. So this one, this one and the healer are, they're skin sticks, but you can also use them on your lips as lip balms. This one was like a lemony feeling. I loved it. And you get half an ounce for $14, which I think is a great deal. I also used up a Chapstick Total Hydration Sweet Peach. I love this one. This is probably my favorite drugstore formulation. I've gone through a couple of the vanillas. I actually... I had a vanilla that I was almost done with and then I lost it on a camping trip. So that one's kind of a no-go, but I really, really enjoy this formula and I would repurchase. And then this has kind of been my like amazing lip balm find for the year. I know so many people love the Laneige lip sleeping masks. This little size, like I don't think you can, you can't tell like when you look in how little product there is unless you look underneath and see. But this is like, oh, I did the math. It's only like $2 worth of lip balm. So it's like a tenth of the product. And this lasted me like two months of every night use. So that means that the full size would last over a year. And I think $20 for a year's worth of lip balm, so knowing these that two together was like $17. I, I think that the Laneige is worth it. Now I've got a lot of lip balms I need to get through before I can go out and buy a full size, but I also have two more of this size to work through and I'm very much enjoying them. I also used up three liquid lipsticks this year. The reason I'm so proud about this is I found two new formulas that I absolutely love and enjoy and I was able to use up one that I loved. So this was the ColourPop the Ultra Matte in Strut. I had had this one for a couple of years. I finally used it up at the beginning of last year. I love that one. It was kind of a cooler tone, like almost gray mauve, and I loved it. I also, I also used up a deluxe size of the Smashbox Always On Liquid Lipsticks in Stepping Out. I had never tried this formula before, and it is amazing. I love it. So I have another one of this size of this color and then I've got another one that's a little bit bigger and more of a pinky shade and the stepping, stepping out color I would probably buy the full size of. I really, really, really enjoyed it and it lasted all day long even with eating. I also used up the Tarte and you can see that I even, I took the, the all three of these, I took the stoppers out and scraped them out. 
but it, this is the Tarte Tartist uh, Quick Matte Lip Paint in Rosé. I loved this and I would totally repurchase this. I have a lot of liquid lipsticks, so I probably would only repurchase this if it was half off. Probably the same with the Smashbox one. But I really enjoyed all three of these, and I'm still on the hunt to find a color that looks like Strut. So, and here's the last category. These are all the setting sprays I used up in 2019. I used up eight full sizes, two smaller travel sizes, but that are purchasable at this size, and then six sample sizes. Now with this, it should be a given for all of the categories except for mascara. And even mascara, there were ones that I finished in January and in February of 2019 that I started back in 2018. But very few of these except for like some of these that I purchased in 2019 and then proceeded to use up. These bigger ones, I had already started. I had already started a majority of these I had already started. So these weren't from start to finish, all of them used up in 2019. I just thought I would let that one known. This is the Urban Decay D Slick. I love this stuff. I think it's great, but it is pretty pricey, so I'd only get it if it was on sale. I used up the Cover FX Illuminating Setting Spray. I like this setting spray once I doctor it. I don't like it with all the illuminating crap in it. So what I do is I like left it sitting on the counter for like a day and then I decanted it into one of these sprayers because I love the sprayer on the Wet n Wild setting sprays. And then I rinsed out the bottle and got rid of all of the shimmering stuff and that's how I ended up using it up. I also used up a NYX matte finish setting spray. Didn't love that one. An e.l.f. Makeup Mist and Set, didn't love that one. Hated the smell of this one, the Wet n Wild Cucumber. Hated the smell of that, wouldn't repurchase. The Wet n Wild Regular Photo Focus Setting Spray was pretty good. Um, you can get it on pretty deep discount on Amazon, so I, I might pick up one of those. This was my favorite, though. Out of all the setting sprays, the Wet n Wild Coconut Priming Water was my, it, I mean, it even made it into my 2019 favorites. I love this stuff. I finished up two. I bought the I bought this one and this one in like April or March. Used both of them up. Repurchased two more of these in like August or September and used one up completely already. And I've got another one in my collection. I love that one. And then out of these two, I love the fragranced MAC setting sprays. Um if my Ulta has like a little Mac section, if they got this one in or another one that I liked, I would purchase it. But um, these little one ounce ones are not worth it. They are, I, they're, I mean, half the price for one ounce versus 3.4. That's a rip off. But I got it for me, myself for my birthday. I was out of town and I, they didn't offer the watermelon in a full size. So I figured I'd treat myself, but I'm not buying this little mini size anymore, especially because I don't like the pump on these ones. I don't think the sprayer is the same. Now this Milani Make It Last, I didn't think that this did anything special. I have a lot more of them that I like than this one, so this isn't something that I would pick up. But I do have one of the matte ones in my collection that's this small size that I got from Ipsy, so I am going to give that one a try. And then I have a little mini of the Bare Minerals Dew Mist. I didn't like this one, but luckily it only lasted me a couple of weeks. I have the Pharmacy Skin Dew uh, Hydrating Essence Mist and Setting Spray. This one was okay, but I didn't like the scent. I have the Super Goop Mist Setting Mist with SPF 50. I liked the SPF 50, but that's the only thing I liked about it. So instead, I'm just going to... I think I'm going to order the Ulta one online that has SPF and see if I like that one. This was the primer water from Smashbox. It was a very little size. So I still don't know how I feel about this one. I assume that it's it would do the same thing as these ones did. So in that aspect, I'd probably just repurchase more of these because this one is like $32 full price. I have a little mini of the Urban Decay All Nighter. Love the All Nighter. Same with the D Slick. Would get it if it was on sale. And then this one, I. 
It's the Tarte Rainforest of the Sea. I liked what it did for taking down the powderiness, but I hated the smell. And my thing with setting sprays, there's a cop car or ambulance or something driving by. Anyways, if I can't get over the smell, it doesn't matter how amazing the setting spray is, I'm not gonna wanna use it. So that's not something that I would repurchase. And these are all the setting sprays I used up. Um, like you can see, I mean, I used up a lot of makeup this year. This was the first year since probably 2015 or 2016 that I was actively wearing makeup for an entire year straight. In 2017, I had a baby, or I had twins, and so the second half of 2017 and the first half of 2018 were not makeup wearing times for me, so it's nice to have an entire year's worth of tracked empties in seeing what I was able to work through, and I'm going to be able to take all of these and compare them next year to my usage. So I will see you guys in another video, and have a great day. Bye!